Wikipedia used to be a gateway to information. It was revolutionary, allowing anyone everywhere to have access to the entire Earth's knowledge. But now it's turned into a propaganda tool and it's being used to destroy the careers of many people. And its most recent victim is Andrew Huberman. Now, for those who don't know, Andrew Huberman is a renowned scientist and Stanford professor that is known for promoting scientific methods for a better life on the internet. However, recently, his Wikipedia page came as a shock to everyone, as the page was edited to mention that he is known for appearing on programs that promote health misinformation. It's a claim of guilt by association. Just by going on Joe Rogan and Lex Freeman's podcasts, Huberman was decided as guilty of spreading conspiracy theories and misinformation. It's a ridiculous claim. Huberman's a Stanford professor of neurobiology, but just because he had a conversation with one of the enemy, he's suddenly been subject to libel and character assassination on his own Wikipedia page. The timing was too convenient to rule this out as being an honest mistake. Huberman has been gaining worldwide attention and acclaim for his simple explanations of complex topics. His star was rising and just two years after starting it, his podcast reached number six on Spotify's rankings. An amazing score for someone just talking about neurobiology, but because of how Google promotes Wikipedia, the second result when you look him up turned into an unfounded accusation against his credibility. And it's unclear how much damage this has caused his reputation amongst academics. And not just academics, but the entire population. And you can see why these people were afraid and wanted to silence and discredit Andrew Huberman. He's been giving millions of men knowledge that nobody else would tell them. His focus on common sense health, backed up by facts and studies, was dangerous. Instead of peddling some pharmaceutical company's latest pill, he told people to eat more protein, get more sunlight, and change their lives for the better. It was something people desperately wanted to hear. Why else would he have gained millions of fans in just a couple of years? So ideologues wanted to shut it down, and it nearly worked. It was only when Lex Friedman tweeted about this and made it public knowledge that he saw any changes. Getting caught in the act forced Wikipedia to roll back the changes and actually phrase things in a non-biased way. Now the criticism of him isn't phrased like it's an immutable truth anymore, but rightly as the opinions of left-wing journalists and elitists. And that's unrelated criticism. The obviously fraudulent accusation of him being anti-vaccine or spreading misinformation has finally been removed. And what Wikipedia was referring to here is that Andrew Huberman appeared on the Joe Rogan podcast. And because Joe Rogan recently had a Twitter beef with Peter Hotez, a fat unhealthy doctor who promotes anything he's told from people above him, this would get Joe Rogan in hot water. As Joe Chan challenged Peter for a public debate and news outlets were pouring in favoring Hotez, claiming that he was being targeted unfairly for Hotez's criticisms of Joe Rogan. And so to get back at Joe Rogan and his challenging of the regime narratives, anyone who went on Joe Rogan's podcast would be targeted by Wikipedia. And so Andrew Huberman, one of the least biased people, highly educated Stanford professors trying to help people all around the world, got his Wikipedia page altered to make him look like someone who was against vaccines. But this only happened because of a powerful and famous voice like Lex Freeman spoke out against this. For people who don't have that voice, Wikipedia can ruin their entire lives. Now, of course, none of this is meant to take away from the good that Wikipedia does do. The vast majority of the site is written by people passionate about a specific subject who want to share their knowledge with the world. People like Stephen Perrett, the top Wikipedia editor who spent his life dedicated to knowledge, writing over 33,000 articles and making millions of edits. Most of Wikipedia is written and maintained by these super users, people writing about niche medieval history or Bulgarian art from the 1700s. Because of these people, People, Wikipedia's a universal good, one of the only things to come out of the internet that actually makes the world a lot better. The problem with Wikipedia though, is that like lots of other sites, it is infested with toxic moderators. 77% of articles are written by the most active 1% of Wikipedia editors. Most of these people are like Stephen Perrette, honest, hardworking people dedicated to a specific factual subject. But some of them aren't so benevolent. Wikipedia's reputation as a purely factual source of information is dangerous. When people tamper with it, they can sneak in their own beliefs into any subject passing it off as factual knowledge. Control over one of the main ways people learn about the world is a powerful thing, so it isn't surprising there's been a lot of abuse here. Just like everything else in our politicized world, Wikipedia has been under attack. Bias has crept into every corner of the site, pushed forward by a loud minority of people, pushing their own beliefs onto the site. Everything has become an arena for an endless battle of who can shout the loudest about their political beliefs, and Wikipedia is no different. Just like the Huberman case, tons of Wikipedia articles sneak left-wing bias into the facts. But the question arises, who is editing all of these Wikipedia pages and why are they doing this in the first place? However, technology like Wikipedia can really be limited when it comes to understanding current markets and trends. And that's why I want to tell you about our sponsor, Candlestick AI. AI is becoming more powerful and more useful in different areas of our lives. 
from art to programming. AI can even help us make better investing decisions. Hedge funds and institutional investors have been using AI for years, all to give them an unfair advantage and produce profit for themselves. Regular investors haven't had that same option until now. Candlestick is an app that gives you your own AI investing co-pilot. Candlestick's AI models practice over past market data until they can achieve superhuman trading performance and make thousands in both 2021 and 2022. Of course, you have to trust your own investment decisions here, and nobody wants to just be told what to do by some higher authority, human or AI, without understanding why. I know I wouldn't be comfortable with that. That's why Candlestick is using generative AI to explain every recommendation and answer any question you might have about finance, investing, or specific stocks. Traditional finance is a one-way street. With AI, it can be a two-way street. But there's no need to commit right away though. Candlestick is extending a special offer to Moon subscribers. Just use the link below to try it out for free until you're ready to join the AI investing movement. You see on the surface, Wikipedia seems like a non-profit organization, a place that's desperately in need of any donations it can get, all to help the public consciousness, where everybody can come and edit pages so that no higher authority would be involved to alter information for their personal gain. But if you dig deeper, you can find hundreds of cases, if not thousands, that question Wikipedia's entire credibility. According to statistics, around 4.5 billion people visit Wikipedia in just the month of April, and these people are unique visitors, showing just how important Wikipedia truly is. For many around the world, it's the biggest and most reliable source of information. But before it was a giant source of information, Wikipedia was just the ambition of a college student. Back in 2000, a man named Larry Sanger was very fascinated with the internet, and he wanted to utilize it for educational purposes rather than to make a profit. So he would join an online encyclopedia, becoming editor-in-chief of what was known as Newpedia. But he was very dissatisfied with the speed of its work. He had a vision for something that would function like the Library of Alexandria. So he pitched the idea to another Newpedia editor, Jimmy Wales and they both decided to launch a new project called wikipedia.com, later being renamed to wikipedia.org because they didn't want it to be commercial. But within a year of its launch, a secretive fight broke out between both founders, which resulted in Larry Sanger leaving Wikipedia. And since leaving Wikipedia, Larry Sanger has spoken against Wikipedia's countless biases. According to him, Wikipedia is becoming more and more biased by the day. And this is coming from its founder. And to prove his point, he mentioned that Fox News is banned from Wikipedia as a source. If only one version of the facts is, uh, is allowed, then that gives a, a huge incentive to um, wealthy and powerful people to seize control of, of things like Wikipedia um, in, in order to, um, to shore up uh, their, um, their power. And whilst Larry Sanger has made such big claims against his own creation, the other founder, Jimmy Wales, denies all of his claims. According to Wales, Wikipedia isn't woke as it gets moderated by the public and common people. But does it really? I mean, Wikipedia likes to present itself as a democracy where everyone has a voice, but their actions seem to go the opposite way. I mean, let me ask you a question here. Who do you actually think the current CEO of Wikipedia is? Someone who's worked for the organization for a long time or an outsider? Well, the current CEO of Wikipedia is Mariana Iskander, who was selected for the position in 2022. But surprisingly, she had almost no collection on Wikipedia before and used to be the CEO of Harambe Youth Employment Accelerator. And one of her biggest supporters was Bill Clinton via his own organization, the Clinton Foundation. And the biggest thing to know here is that Jeffrey Epstein's lawyer mentioned that Epstein helped Clinton form this organization and that he was one of the biggest donors during its early days. But the Clinton Foundation doesn't mention Epstein anywhere. But it gets even more interesting because when we understand this next point, you start to understand why Wikipedia is silencing all the major voices on the internet. Voices that go against the mainstream narratives. Back in 2016, Wikipedia started becoming less and less impartial. If you go on Wikipedia to check rankings and ratings of former US presidents, it shows results based on diversity and inclusivity scores. And almost every Democratic president is at the top of the list, whilst Republicans at the bottom. Anything coming out about Hunter Biden and Ukraine is labeled a conspiracy theory, even though there is solid proof from many well-established news departments. And the Wikipedia founder, Larry Sanger, also mentioned that the CIA moderates Wikipedia all the time. And even Mark Zuckerberg revealed on the Joe Rogan podcast that this is a common occurrence online, with the FBI ordering Facebook to suppress anything about the Hunter Biden laptop story. I mean, basically, the background here is the FBI, I think, basically came to us, some, some folks on our team, and was like, hey, um, just so you know, like, you should be on high alert. There was, the, we, we thought that there was a lot of Russian propaganda in the 2016 election. We have it on notice that basically there's about to be some kind of dump of, of um, uh, uh, that's similar to that. So just be vigilant. And so if this is happening on Facebook, just like it's happening on Twitter, there's absolutely no doubt that government intelligence units 
moderate Wikipedia. I mean, a new report was recently published that Hunter Biden used a PR firm to fix his image on Wikipedia. And if you go check the edit history on Hunter Biden, you can see it has been edited more than 100 times in the last 30 days, despite being locked. Which opens up a whole other can of worms. Why does Wikipedia lock articles and who can edit the locked articles? Well, Wikipedia is known for locking all the major pages and articles, and only Wikipedia moderators can edit them. Now, I've made countless videos about moderators and all these social media platforms oppressing free speech, but with Wikipedia, the situation is just so much worse. All the Wikipedia moderators are selected by Wikimedia, which is the parent organization of Wikipedia, and they don't randomly select any people. They carefully look into their background, their contribution to Wikipedia, and their history with the organization, which is very fine, but bad for transparency. And it's this lack of transparency that allows bias from Wikipedia to go completely unchecked and even promoted by Wikipedia higher-ups. And that's why Wikipedia will never use Fox News as a source, but will use CNN. In fact, Wikipedia has its own list of reliable sources. For the United States of America, Wikipedia suggests at the top of this list sites like CNN, The New York Times, and The Washington Post. And it's not just Fox News that's banned from the site. There are countless media organizations that go against the mainstream narrative that are completely silenced from the platform, allowing moderators to dictate articles as they wish. And that's why recently, Andrew Huberman has been the main target. And it all came to light when Lex Friedman, a popular podcaster, posted about this issue. And after this tweet, Andrew Huberman's Wikipedia Wikipedia article was edited 28 times, showing a clear sign of panic within the Wikipedia moderator group. But if Wikipedia is not completely reliable, then why is its search volume still so high? While well, there's only one company that's continuing to let Wikipedia survive, Google. According to statistics, Wikipedia appears on the first page or top results for 99% of Google searches, which is very important because 99.23% of people never click on page 2 of Google. So it's obvious Wikipedia will get more and more search results. And Google is one of the biggest donors to Wikipedia. And Google's co-founder Sergey Brin has talked about its importance many, many times. That's why Google gives Wikipedia an important status over any other website on the internet. And yet as Wikipedia becomes more and more biased, people are starting to be outraged by the site. And it's not just me claiming this. Many researchers have recently published their work analyzing Wikipedia's biases. A 2018 study by Shane Greenstein and Feng Zhu compared levels of political bias in Wikipedia and Encyclopedia Britannica. Their study found that Wikipedia articles are far more politically biased than those in the Encyclopedia Britannica, as well as heavily leaning towards democratic candidates and policies over any other party. Wikipedia's list of banned sources is 16 times higher for right-wing media outlets than it is for left-wing ones. And that's why Larry Sanger, the founder, wants nothing to do with his creation anymore. And so as the news media has shifted, and as the establishment, frankly, has shifted more to the left, the content of Wikipedia has, has followed suit. He had a vision for a project that could unite people all around the world for reliable and trustworthy information. But over time, Wikipedia has become more and more detached, and now it's infested with censorship policies. Which all goes to show that just like everything else, you shouldn't trust Wikipedia blindly. It's not immune to the constant political activism that defines the modern internet. In fact, it's much harder to detect than in other already biased sources. Instead, Wikipedia is an excellent starting point, a surface level summary of the facts. Stay away from all these political pages and look deeper into the sources they give. That's where the real value of the site is.